All right, this is a Beatmaker 3 major key alert. Do not go anywhere else. You're gonna wanna see this. I've told you guys about how important automation is in your music production, but I haven't told you there's a much better way than what I've shown you to automate Beatmaker 3, and that's what we're doing today. What is up creatives? It's Jarrell, your music technologist here to help you master the tech you need to make music freely. I'm not gonna waste any time today. We're gonna get right into Beatmaker 3. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about with automation. But real quick, did you guys know that Beatmaker 3 has a manual? Yes, it has a manual. During my recent content hiatus, I took some time to make some music and I decided to delve into Beatmaker 3's manual and learn a couple of things. And I learned some things that absolutely changed the game for me when it comes to automation. And I can't wait to share them with you. Let me show you. But really quick, definitely subscribe to the channel because you know you wanna know how to make beats and you know you're not gonna read no manual. If you want more content like this, where I do the, the dirty work for you of reading the manual, subscribe to this channel. There'll be more coming to you without further ado. So here I am in Beatmaker 3. This is a recent session that I did in my most recent live stream. I've done some sprucing up and adding some stuff, but I've also done some automation and uh, I'm gonna show you guys really quick the way I would have automated in the past, and then I'll show you what I'm doing now that's better. So, for example, I like to automate Koala effects a lot. I like to use their filter sweep, it's pretty great. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the drums right here, and I'm gonna pull up Koala effects. Go into audio unit, V3, scroll down to Koala effects, and load it up. I'm gonna go into Koala effects, I'm gonna hit show AU knobs, and the effect I wanna work on is filter. So I'm gonna double tap, I'm gonna hit macro controls, and I'm gonna add it to macro one. So now you see that one right there showing up. That is gonna be on macro one here in the macros tab over here. I like to go ahead and hit that latch, so that means if I do this and I, and I you know, bring the filter down, it will snap back to 50%. Um, anyway, so I like to use this knob to automate it. Um, this is now connected to that. I don't know if you can see that. I'm moving this and it's moving the filter up there. So let me get these headphones on and we'll show you a quick automation and how it works. So let's go to a spot where there's drums and let's record some automation. Make sure you have automation turned on up here. Recording automations need to be on, not off. So that's not usually enabled by default, so make sure you enable it. I leave re-enable on loop turned on, and then quantize automation, I leave it off, because I don't want it quantized. All right, let's do this. I'm gonna hit record. Okay, let's bring the filter down. Bring it back up. The way we see the automation we just recorded is you, you make sure you're on the right track right here, the right bank, and you hit track automations. And that's what we just recorded right there. All those squigglies. <laughs> that's our, our automation recorded. That's great, all of that worked fine. We got everything recorded in here. But here's the bummy part. If I want to have this automation appear in another hook later, there's no clean or neat way to copy and paste this. And it's, in, it's so frustrating. <laughs> The only way to do it is I can, you know, double tap my select to highlight this whole thing and I can hit duplicate and then I can go through and just drag this over and try to line it up. Um, the problem is sometimes you don't want to, you can't just highlight everything because you only want one of them. So for example, uh, I can't just, if I wanna just move one of these and not both, Double tapping is not gonna work. So what I'm gonna have to do is go in here and manually select. And this is the most frustrating part because you gotta get all these points from top to bottom. So you can, if you double tap and hold to select, you can go over the whole thing without having to drag from top to bottom. And that makes it a little bit easier. Anyway, the whole, the UI is just a little sloppy. So what I would rather do is have a pattern. Those of you that are familiar with FL Studio know about automation clips that you can just copy and paste and I found a way to do it. So 
you can not only record automations into the track automations for the full song, but you can record pattern automations. Yes, pattern automations. This is what I discovered. So really quick, I'm just gonna delete this whole automation here, and I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about. So right here, I've got my drums in pattern one. So what I want is anytime I have the drums in pattern one, I want that automation to happen. And I wanna just be able to copy this, hit repeat, and all my automations are saved with the clip. You can do that. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and hit pattern one here, select it. Go up here to the top menu, hit pattern, and you can see there's pattern autom automations. Now I can go in here and create a manual automation and then just draw it in, and then it will do the same thing as what I'm about to do. But you can also record these automations in, and that's the trickier part. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So if I go back here to the song panel, all right, I've got this pattern selected. I can hit the pattern selector at the top left here, okay? Now select the pattern that you want to automate. So for me, it's pattern one. You'll notice this up here changed to show just the pattern. Now I can record an automation directly to this pattern. So now that that pattern's selected, you'll see it kind of blacks out um, these patterns here. But now that the pattern's selected, you can see up there it says pattern one. I can go over here to my macros tab and we can go ahead and record that automation again. So now that we've recorded that, you'll see this is still grayed out. We're gonna go in here to this pattern selector again. We're gonna hit play song. Now that you'll see that made that bright again. Basically what that did is it made it to where it's gonna play what's in your, your song list now. So just make sure you go back to play song after you've recorded your automation. All right, so you get out of that, hit pattern, and we hit pattern automations. And what do we have? We have an automation. This is the exact automation that we played in with that knob. There it is in all of its squiggly glory. <laughs> now, here's the dope part. Anytime I have pattern one now, I'm gonna get that same automation. So I can take pattern one right here, hit repeat, bring it over here, and let's just go ahead and set loop on that, and let's listen to that. That's that filter. If you look in here at the pattern, you can see it. And it's every time. I don't need to mess at all with this copy and paste in here. I just have a pattern and the, the automation stays locked to the pattern and I can just copy and paste the pattern. That's so much easier than having to go into your track automations and mess with that. It also means that you're not stuck with the layout that you have. So for example, I'm working on sequencing this song right now. If I record in an automation up here at the beginning and it goes into my track automations, if I add more patterns and I scoot stuff over, that automation's not going with it. The automation is staying right there, which means anytime I add a pattern or, in, or something in there and I move stuff, I have to go in and move all the automations too. That is no bueno. That, that is not a good workflow. Having a pattern automation though changes a lot of things. I can now have freedom to arrange things how I want without having to go and redo stuff all the time. So now there's some caveats to this. You might ask, what if I don't want that automation on the drums every time? What if I want, sometimes I want the automation and sometimes I want it without the automation. I'm glad you asked. There's a way to deal with that. So for example, pattern one has that automation. If I click into pattern one, hit pattern automations, there it is. All right, maybe I don't want that. I want a pattern without that so that I can just have straight drums, no problem. Hit the beloved duplicate button right there. It creates a brand new pattern. You'll notice it says pattern four. I don't know if you can see that well. It says pattern four, uh, cause it's a brand new pattern. And now that pattern does still have the automation, but look what I can do. I can go into pattern and then I can just delete this automation. See, make sure you have pattern four selected. 
delete the automation, and boom, now we just have straight drums for this pattern only. Now pattern one is still gonna have that automation. So here's pattern four over here, and here's pattern one. If I tap into pattern one, there's the automation. Now if I go into pattern four, no automation, boom. That's how you do it. You can just create new patterns for everything that have automations or not. Now let me show you another way I use this in my music production. Down here at the bottom, I have some aux channels. This one's called strings. I have all of my string instruments from the beginning of this going into this auxiliary channel. Now, having an aux channel makes it a lot easier to affect multiple instruments, multiple banks, with one set of parameters. So did you know that you can create blank patterns and automate in those blank patterns for auxiliary effects? Let me give you an example here. You'll see I got these random blank patterns here. Well, these aren't so random. I've got some automations going on. So these strings at the beginning, I'm gonna let you hear them. Let's tap into this to see what's happening. Okay, we have an automation here. That ring effect you heard there at the end was from this automation. Let me back it up just a hair so you can catch it again. Now, I could have just recorded that automation directly into the track automations, but like I said, if I decide to change anything, then I gotta move everything again, and moving all those little points is very difficult and annoying. Instead, what I did was I just, you can go into any of these aux channel areas, and you can just double tap, and it creates a new pattern. So if I stretch this out, you'll see that's pattern one. It created a pattern, let me show you right here. Pattern one. Now I can tap into that pattern and there's a, an automation page. This is a pattern automation page. I can record directly into this automation exactly the way I showed you before. So I'll, ha I'll hit this pattern selector right here and then I can use pattern one. That's the one I just added, boom. And then I can click out of here, go to macros tab and record some automations and they will show up here. Now, if you're gonna do this blank pattern method, there's gonna be one thing that is a little bit tricky. Let me show you. So when you're in here and you're getting ready to record your automation into this pattern, you're gonna wanna zoom out. And th these numbers are how many bars your pattern is. By default, when you create a pattern, uh, just by double tapping in there, it's gonna make it one bar. You have to drag this out for however many bars you want your pattern to be before you record, so that way the automation will show up. If you don't do that, the automation won't show up properly. So just make sure you have it dragged out. I have it dragged out for eight bars, so when I'm ready to record, I got that dragged out. I can just go right here and then hit pattern two, which is what we're on, and then that sets it up there. I can just go to automate and hit record and then it will record it. What's the point of this, why? Because I can move this automation anywhere I want. I can use it to affect the strings way later in the song. Let's say I want that automation to start just a little bit later. I can zoom in here, grab this clip, move it over, okay? And then if I go and I play this again, you'll see that the effect starts later. that's not when I want it to start, but I have that option. It was really easy, and that's any automation I put in this clip. So I can automate multiple parameters. I can do all kinds of automations in here, different effects, and then I can just move the whole clip and it will move everything. This is beautiful because now, when I want this effect later in the song, I can just hit repeat, drag it over, and it's there for the next time. And all I have to do is add the strings in over here. So you'll notice I already had a different one here labeled pattern two. Let me make, it sure, you, make sure you can see it. So pattern two is, uh, is another pattern with a different automation. Tap into that, and you'll see I have a filter automation in here. Now, how did I create a second pattern on the aux here? Well, you'll notice this is pattern two. I had pattern one before, and in order to add pattern two, you can't just tap in again. What you gotta do is go into this pattern mode over here, and then you wanna go to your pattern selector and hit create pattern. 
This creates a new pattern. Pattern four is the next one to create. I've already had one through three. So and you can also rename these patterns so you know what they are. So you can hit rename and say I wanted this to be a filter sweep. I could label it filter sweep. See, now I know what parameters are, are going to be affected. And if I look in here, say I want to add that pattern, I'll hit the pattern selector, drag in filter sweep, open it up. See, it's labeled so I can see what it is and I can put it wherever it needs to go without having to fuss with the track automations. So this pattern automation is not only available for your MIDI tracks and your auxiliary tracks, but it's also available for your audio tracks. Let me show you. So I can choose any of these clips and I can automate them. So I've got, let's see, audio 15. I've got a track here. You're gonna to wanna to double tap on that. Okay, now we're in the pattern view. This works exactly the same way as our MIDI channel. So here's pattern automations down here. I could pick something like mute and I could draw in with my Apple Pencil or with your finger an automation like that. Or you can play it in exactly the same way. So we can delete this automation here. You can hit this arrow to see more and you can delete this whole automation right here. If I wanted to record the automation, obviously make sure automation is still armed. Tap this up here, select the one you want. So if you look down here, you see it's number three and, and it's there's the date and everything. And if I go up here, that's the one I want to select. So number three, that is armed. Now I can record any automation I want. Simple as that. Same thing as your other channels. And then when you're done, just make sure you go up here and press play song again and it's all set. There you go, creatives. I hope that was helpful. That was a major key for me and I have several more of those coming. If this at all seemed like it was too challenging or too advanced for you, definitely check out my previous video on automation, which I will link up in the card as well as down in the description. Beatmaker 3, like I said, I dug into the manual for you so you don't have to. If you wanna make sure you catch these major keys, definitely make sure you're subscribed because I'm gonna be doing more of these very soon. But until next time, creatives, go make something dope and I'll see you in the next video.